All right. We are up and going again. Here we are. Good morning, artists. Welcome back. Uh, today is Tuesday. It's already been a very interesting day. Uh, woke up with sun. Went for a walk in a little bit of snow. Back to sun. Clouds. About a minute and 30 second, a very intense blizzard hailstorm. And then back to sun again now. Oh, hi. Visitors. Riley, come here a second. Look at. Hey. Don't look at me, look at her. Who's that? Wiley. <laughs> all right, back to class. We all know that that's normal for class anyway, though, don't we? Because there's always somebody who's coming in and saying hello and saying good morning. <laughs> you gonna hang out with me? The dog's gonna hang out with me for a bit, so I might talk to him too. Good morning. We got somebody new. Hi, Huara. I'm glad you could make it this morning. So, yesterday we were working on our beautiful eyeball. I've already seen a couple people um, starting to turn these in and show off what they have done. Um, remember, this is not finished yet. That was just part one of our whole assignment. We're still going to work on the middle of it today. Um, and today we're going to be adding what is called a surrealistic element. So, surreal, word of our day, is something that is mostly realistic and then has one little thing in it that's a little bit of a twist. So something that's just a little bit off. So we're gonna be adding that in today. So we've had our very realistic looking eye and now we're gonna switch it up and we're gonna add something a little bit different. Now from our artwork that I showed you yesterday, you could keep it pretty simple and pick something that is round and just put it in the eyeball. So the inspiration for this project had come from somebody who had done some really cool pictures of different planets. Um, and now we're doing something a little, you can, you can do that, but now we can add in other things as well. So I actually did a lot of thinking yesterday trying to come up with what I wanted to do for mine. And I think I have a good idea. We're going to work on it together though. So again, you don't have to do what I'm doing now. You do have to fill in the center of the eyeball. You do not have to do what I'm doing. You do your own thing. If you want to do what I'm doing, that's fine too. I'm going to walk through it any way. Let's go down to business here. Hey, who's that? Uh oh, we've got more invaders. Hi, Wesker. Wesker's my other dog. There he is. There he is. Hi, Wesker. <laughs> Everybody's downstairs today. If you two start fighting, though, I swear. You can't have fights in the classroom. They're going to start fighting. You're going to hear some fights. I can already tell. Leave them alone, Wiley. All right. So here was my thought process in going into this. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Pause for a minute, guys. Sorry about this. That's why this is live TV, everybody. Well, unless you're watching this later, and then you're probably just confused. Uh, the dogs decided to try and start wrestling, which resulted in pulling down my lovely backdrop. So um, you might end up seeing more of my basement than I intend for you to see later on. In any case, so here was my thought process. Back on track. One of the things I was thinking about with this was to give you guys the opportunity to kind of express what you've been going through a little bit in in this time where we've been kind of stuck inside our houses and not been able to get out so you could keep it simple like i said or if you have something that you've been really thinking about um that you want to kind of express through this this is your chance this is like the window to the soul this is the look inside of a person's mind so what i've mostly been thinking about is a passage of time so the idea that we've kind of been stuck in the state of, you know, days going by, one day is very similar to the last in a lot of cases. It's hard to find things to do all the time. 
So I wanted to go with the idea of maybe creating sort of a clock shape. And right now what I'm doing is I'm dividing up my circle to try and create the different sections for a clock. Now because part of my circle is invisible, we wouldn't see all of what's going on there. It's going to be kind of hidden. And I think what I actually want to do for this part is to do some Roman numerals from a very old kind of clock. And in fact, let's zoom in a little bit. Get a little bit closer. There we go. All right, so we all know our own numbers. Eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. Roman numerals are the old way of counting. And in some cases, it almost makes more sense, at least when you go one, two, and three. That's easy enough. Um, skipping four for a second, five was shown like this. So with, on either side of five, if it was one before five, that was one number before the number five. When we go after the number five, that becomes five and one. So this is kind of like five minus one, and this is five plus one. And we've got five plus two and five plus three. They didn't go more than three lines in this. So, skipping nine for a second, ten, let's crisscross. So nine is one number before ten. Eleven is one number after. And twelve is two numbers after. Roman numerals. I just taught you guys social studies today. You are welcome. So, 12 will be up at the top here. I'm not going to see most of it. It's going to be pretty well hidden behind my eye. Number 1 is going to be sneaking in here. There's 2. I'm doing it lightly for now because I intend on going in and adding color to this part. I would like you guys to add color at this point too. Um, it helps to kind of add to that little bit of a surreal feeling in all of this. You've got this very realistic shaded pencil drawing. And then the center just opens up with some color. Number seven, number eight. Yesterday was very accomplished though. I finished a puzzle that I had just gotten. That was fun. I've got a second puzzle <laughs> waiting to go. I might wait a little bit on that though. Maybe do it uh, next week. There we go. All right. Now, I've got this idea already going of my clock. Bam. I want to add something else to this because I, I like the idea of really committing to the idea of time and a clock could be enough but I want to bring this a little bit further. I'm going to add in here an hourglass shape. So I'm going to be getting rid of these lines eventually. I'm going to use them as a guide right now to get this curvy Let's make it even a little bit thinner. Don't want sands of time going through too fast. So before they made clocks, 
hourglasses were a great way of figuring out one time after the other. Put a bunch of sand in the top. And the sand would pour through to the bottom where you would get another pile of sand. And when all the sand ran out of the top, they put in just enough to mark, usually it's, depends. You can get small hourglasses that can only go for a minute. You can get ones that are bigger that are actually an hour. And of course they're not perfect timekeepers because there's always the chance that the sand might get caught or somebody might bump it. But it's what we had early on before electricity. Nice. And then of course, ultimate teller of time. Do I have anything really circular that would help? Mm. You're a little bit bumpy, I don't want to eat you. Might be the teacup, hold on. Tea break. Today's tea flavor is cinnamon. Love me my cinnamon tea. Let's see. What do I have that is circular? I can just grab real quick. Big enough? It's a little on the big side, but I think we can make it work. All right, this is the top from another candle. I have had quite a few candles. It's kind of nice when you've got dogs, you can put up a candle and it doesn't smell quite like dog anymore. <laughs> So, I know it's hard to see what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm tracing the thinnest part of this top to create a little circle shape that's going behind my hourglass. And we're gonna have one side of this is going to be our sun. So we'll sneak in a little Up a little actually let's see let's be let's be smart let's put them in between our numbers so we don't cover our numbers ta-da brilliant sun and then for the moon we'll be a little creative on that side We'll color that really nice. All right. So there's my basic idea. And again, you guys can do something similar to this if you want. You do not have to. You just have to choose something to do for the center circle of yours. So I'm going with time, the passage of time that's happening right now. And we're gonna color with, I'm choosing colored pencil. And just to make sure, that when I, whenever I do assignments with you guys, I try to use the same kind of materials you might have. Um, if you've been following me before, I've been doing stuff with my really nice Prismacolor pencils, but I don't want to end up using those for this. So I'm going with da -da, the regular old Crayola. So I have a bunch of those handy. Don't you dare fall on the floor. All right. Pencils everywhere. Let's start off. I'm going to use a gray for the hourglass. Coloring tricks. If you're coloring with colored pencil and you're not doing an outline, um, that's something I like to do in a lot of my artwork is I will outline it first with like a micron pen and then I'll color it in. Just because I am a fan of that type of look, that comic type of look. But if you're doing a drawing where you don't want to outline, you just want the colored pencil, you can still go over it with pencil first 
and then erase the area just before you go over it. If I were to go over this with the colored pencil, I would end up with a darker tone, and I don't want that. I want just the pencil. So I will sketch everything out first, and then I will go into certain areas like this, and I will erase, and then go over it immediately. So rather than trying to do the whole thing in colored pencil that is not nearly as erasable as regular pencil, I will go over it first and then erase and redraw it. Is that a little bit time consuming? Yes, it does take time to do it, but I find that the quality then is better. So there is our glass. We're going to keep that color handy. Now the sand does not require me to keep the entire line because that's kind of just random all over anyway. Random bumpiness. So no need to keep too much of it at a time. Let's even bring this a little bit lower because then I can spill it out between the numbers. Yeah. Sand. Now, for some of these numbers, so on this side, I've got my sun. Let's actually do that first. Race. Redraw. Let's get a little bit of orange in that. Just to make it a little better visibility. Okay. Now for the lines of the sun. I know when we did landscaping last week, I told you that enemy number one was doing lines and sticks coming out of your sun. And that is true when you are doing a very realistic piece. If you are doing something that is not realistic, by all means, add as many lines and sticks as you want. I definitely do. All right. My plan will be, since this is going to be the sunny side, that this background area is going to get colored in a sky color. So if that's going to be sky, I may want my numbers to end up being, maybe I'll make them kind of light. That might be tricky. Let's try it anyway. So I'm going to start by erasing my number. Now I'm going to create sort of a block around it. X shape. This is a trick that you may need to leave some of your lines up for. But I'm really familiar with the Roman numerals, so and and with doing block letters, so it's it's a little bit easier for me to go in and add that. Let's get rid of the outside line just a little bit. I don't mind that being a little bit darker. So here's what this is going to end up kind of looking like. I'm going to sneak around it. And color this nice sky blue.
So it's visible. It's not strongly visible, but let's get a, let's see, let's see. Where are you hiding, Blue? Uh -huh. All the dark colors are trying to hide in the box. So I'm going to use a little bit of a darker blue, just on the edge. And I'm going to try to do a little bit of a gradient. Gradient meaning changing from one color to another, like a darker blue to a lighter blue. So just a little darker on the outside, and then it starts getting a little bit lighter towards the end. Maybe sneak a little bit right on the edge there. Okay. Beautiful. Now, trickier up at the top here because our number is half hidden inside of our eyelashes. So what I'm gonna do is erase out the number Even though that means kind of losing a little bit of the eyelashes. And now I can go in there and get it. What this means is I will have to go back in and redo some of the eyelashes, but that's fine. Beautiful. Sneak in that dark blue, especially underneath. Okay. And then back in with my pencil. So it's still visible, it's just barely there, but we can see it. Now, I'm noticing as I've been working on this side, my hand has gotten dirty, and that's because it keeps rubbing against this pencil, and it's causing a lot of smudging to happen now. So, pro tip that you guys now get to learn from me, making an oops, when you're working on something like this, and you've got to work on one area, but you've already colored another area. Scrap paper. We'll just borrow our Roman numerals here. I don't want to get pencil on anything. Pop that down onto your paper. Boom! Ham goes on it. No more smudging your own work. Beautiful. Beautiful. Alright, now we're going to go and... Put in our number eight down here. So our eight does a V shape. Three little lines there. Nice. Now I know I talked about this a little bit on a previous stream. The difference between the Crayola pencils and the nicer Prisma pencils. Crayola is fine. They are cheaper and they can get a job done really well. Most of the projects that I have done 
as examples for you guys, I will use the Crayola pencils because I know if I snuck in with my Prismas, the colors are so much stronger and you can do so much more with them um, that there are just some things that would be impossible to recreate with the Crayola. So even if you were like, oh, I really like what you did there, and Michonne, can you show me how to do that? I would probably not even be able to just because the Crayola does not do the same kind of things. Um, you can do some amount of blending like this with Crayola, but the pencils do not mix up nearly as well as the Prisma do. Prismacolor pencils blend very well together. Crayola not as much. Tea break. All right, let's get into the actual sun. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use some yellow first. I'm gonna go ahead and let it get a little bit lighter toward the middle. White colored pencil with Crayola does not work the same as Prisma. With Prisma, it will definitely blend and lighten in colors. In Crayola, it doesn't lighten a whole lot. Um, it might do a little bit of blending, but not nearly so useful. Let's do a little more gradient action. A little orange near the edge. And get a little bit in towards, but we're not gonna take the orange nearly that far. But we'll use it. A little bit in. Our triangles here to help give them a little bit of a 3D feel. Very nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and get to our other side. Now for this section, since this is going to be our moon section, let's get the light gray. Go along our curved line first. And you can really see the difference between these two sides where it got messed up. That's all right. That's what erasers are for. All right, so again, leaving this a little bit light, I'm going to do just a super light amount of gray on here. Like almost non-existent if I can help it, except near the edge. And then the white, it's not entirely helpful. Mostly what I'm using it for in this is just to make sure that this area does not go any darker. Once you've put some colored pencil on here, it's, it's almost like a protective layer. There's like a, there's enough wax in it that it kind of protects the paper. So mostly I'm just using this to make sure that this area does not go any darker. And then we're going to add little hints of some shadowed areas, like the craters on the moon. Just hints. All right, watch your ears sharpening a pencil. <laughs> 
probably could go over these numbers in white too, but I think we'll just leave them be for now. All right, sneaking in here now. I'm gonna go and outline these in with a dark blue for the moment. We're going to end up making it more of a night sky. So it'll probably be darker than just this dark blue, but we'll start with it anyway. Such a fan of these Roman numerals. It's just funny how every different uh, everyone has their own different way of writing numbers, different areas of the world. And some of them you look at and you're like, man, that just makes so much more sense. Like our numbers, our number one, that makes sense. It's just a line, it's singular, it's the number one. Roman does the same thing, but they make it a little more complicated. R2, why is it a curve? I don't know. Is it because there's two rows? Did it used to be just like this? This makes more sense. Three, it's kind of like one, two, three, stopping points. But then, what, why is four? If it were a box, that would make sense. Four sides. This is logical. We get this. And I think that the reason they chose five is because of maybe five fingers? I don't know. It's a mystery. See, and that's fun because on some level... It's art. Art is a visual way of communicating ideas to people. So writing a number, that is a artist's way of explaining amounts. You created a visual representation of it. If I did something like this, for example, if I went I think a lot of you would be able to look at this and you know you might go, oh yeah, shapes, it's math. No. But you could count one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. It makes sense. Right? I think so. Could you then six? Would six then be five and one? Or would you do something else? Would you do... Does that equal six? It makes sense. What about if six was this? It's two threes. Three and three is six. That makes sense. Anyway, we're not creating a number system. I'm getting distracted. But sometimes it's interesting just to think of how you could explain an idea without having to use words. Because sometimes you just can't really get a whole thought out in just a simple sentence or a couple of words. I mean, that's why we have stories. But if I were trying to explain a scene to you, a situation, a character, I'd have to 
describe the character, tell you what they looked like, tell you, if, you know, if they were walking on a road. Is it day? Is it night? Is it raining? Is it clear out? Are there clouds? Where is he? Is he on a street on in a forest? Is he on a street on a city? It would take me like a page probably to describe a character, tell you what they look like, where they are, what their immediate action is. Are they standing? Are they walking? And if I did a picture, I would be able to tell you all of that and you would be able to just look at it and bam, you would understand exactly what's going on. Pictures are incredible that way. You can, you can express things so quickly. And even better, if I'm trying to read a story to a group of people and half those people don't speak English, they're not going to get my story at all. Right? But I show them a picture and they'd know everything. They would get it right away. Let's actually, let's sneak a little purple in here too. Give it a little more of an evening flavor. A sunset, galaxy, night. So, <laughs> the application kind of quit on me and unfortunately just decided to die. I don't know. We're back though. I don't know what that's going to mean for my video later. We'll figure it out. In any case. We only had a little bit of time left, so I wanted to try and just finish this up with you guys since it's almost there. Rather than having you just cut off there. Oh my goodness, I have no idea even where it ended up dying on me. Might be the internets. Might be something else, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I grabbed the different gray in my distraction, guys. Right. We're mixing them together anyway. So let's go a little bit darker on the edges then. Try to give the whole thing a rounded feel by doing darker on the edge and lighter toward the middle. Might be time to learn how to do some video editing so I can put these two pieces back together so it makes for one video. Used to be really good using, um, when my old school we had Apple computers, which had iMovie, and I got really good using iMovie and I used it for a lot of different things for 8th grade videos and all of that but I no longer have access to that and I don't want to get an Apple computer I don't like them quite as much and 
I prefer Microsoft Word and Excel over anything else. I'm gonna sneak a little bit of a darker brown in here too. Help show the sand a little better. Sneak a little white in here just to try and blend it a little bit. Just the little bit that the white is able to do with the Crayola. Okay, I think that is probably going to be it. Let's pull back, see the whole thing finished up. Massive colored pencils out of the way. How's that? And a little higher. There we go. So, there is our finished eye drawing. So, again, everybody is doing the outside edge. The outer eye should all be follow the leader. You're doing what I'm doing. The inside is going to be totally up to you guys. So I've got uh, our nice little clock and time and sun and moon. Beautiful. I like it. All right. Um, I guess I can turn this back around, but it's a mess behind me from when those crazy dogs came through. Look at that. You can see the light and everything. That's all right. That's good enough. So, this whole project will be due by Friday, so you have plenty of time still to get it done. Your home packets are also due Friday. I'm going to stress this again. I know some of you did not get invites into the Google Classroom until I sent the third round out, the like direct invites. The classroom codes were sent out before spring break. So try to get as much of the packet done as you can. I understand that if you need a little extra time, you can turn parts of it in late, but I urge you to please turn in something before the, uh, or by Friday. So even if it's the first couple of pages that you've gotten done, turn in what you were able to get finished and then turn in the rest later. I will still accept it but I'd like you to try to get something in so that when I put in the rest of the grades on Friday, you will have something in there, okay? If you have any questions or concerns about your project, please send them to me. Um, you can upload pictures onto the classroom um, without having them marked as being turned in. So I can still go in and I can see them and I can check them off um, and, and give you guys some advice if you need it. Okay, or if you want to email me directly with them and not put them on classroom right away, um, that's probably a good idea too. Okay, try to send me a message with a specific question. If you put your picture in, um, but don't send a message and don't mark it turned in, I might not see it right away as being done. But if you send me a message like, hey, can you check this out? It allows me to get an email that says somebody posted up a message and then I'm able to go in and actually check it out and reply to you. So send me info if you need it or uh, questions, I guess, if you need them. Um, otherwise, I will see you tomorrow on stream. We'll be working on something else. All right. You guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay indoors. Wash your hands. Watch out for random hailstorms like we got this morning. Um, hopefully things will start clearing up soon and we'll have some nicer weather. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.